Hi, my name is Rachel Brewster and welcome to my channel Humor in Heels where I tell stories about like stupid shit that I've done that eventually are really funny but in the moment make me think I'm gonna lose my bloody mind and I am in the middle of one of those stories right now and I actually don't know what the moral of the story is yet. I am torn between like this is either a story about like really strong and amazing emotional endurance or this video should be titled like seven steps to fit yourself for a straight jacket. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it. Okay, so bought a new townhouse, yay me. And uh, it's my very first home and so I'm trying to DIY stuff. Uh, I have been considering doing a like YouTube series on the anti DIY girl because that would be me because the amount of stuff that I am terrible at or have just no idea just didn't know didn't know had no idea and my eyes are open and she'll never be closed again and I'm just frustrated as all hell so <sighs> here's the story I wanted to change out the chandelier in my dining room right it was the standard chandelier, kind of like you can see this. Everybody's seen that boob, right? We've all seen that chandelier that comes with like every house. And when you buy a house, you want to make it your own. And I was like, oh, I want to replace the chandelier with like a cute girly glam chandelier. And so I'll buy one of those. And so uh, I bought one and it came in the mail and I was like, great, look at me. And I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and all the YouTubers were like, yeah, so it'll take like an hour, maybe two hours. I'm on day four, maybe, we're going into day five, maybe day six. Fuck, it's insane. Okay, so step one, don't electrocute yourself, right? All I had to do was like switch off the fuse to make sure I don't electrocute myself, that I can do. And I go into my garage and everything is labeled, right? I've got kitchen and living room and bedroom and kitchen appliances and dryer and furnace, there is no dining room, none. So I flick every single switch in the fuse box one at a time and open the door and like look in the, in the dining room and check and nope, the original chandelier is still there, light is still on. So I go through every single one and then I go back through them because I'm like, well, one of these fuses has to be the dining room. That's, what are you gonna do? Finally, I realized that the one that I didn't did flick but did not check was the garage, right? Because I'm standing in the garage. And when the light bulb in the garage went off, I was like, oh, clearly this is the fuse for the garage as it is labeled on the fuse box. And so I don't need to check. Nope, my dining room and my garage are on the same switch, on the same outlet. Okay, fine. So I turn that off and I go in and I take down the chandelier and that took like 45 seconds. I was like, look at me, I'm just like a handyman. <laughs> just so great. And then I open up the box from my chandelier and I go, oh, you know how when you're a kid and you get a toy and some of the, to the toys will say like some assembly may be required. This chandelier should have come with a warning label that said, shitload of assembly will be required. Because I didn't think about the fact that a chandelier is going to have all of those little tiny crystals, right? And so all of those little tiny crystals are individually wrapped in this huge box. And so not only am I going to have to set it up, but I'm going to have to hang every single one of the crystals. And I was like, did not think that through. Huh. Not great, but like, whatever, right? It's fine. And so the other thing that I didn't think through is the fact that this one, so it's like a plate, and then all the, the light bulbs hang here, and so do all the crystals, and then it's hung by these wires, right? But you change the wires to change how low or high it should hang above your table. Well, they're already tied, so I need to untie them. Mother trucker, whoever is in the manufacturing, they are like King fucking Kong. Like they must have gone to town on just tightening those things because like 
right now they're hanging like 10 inches off the plate, right? And I need it to be like 30 or something. So I need to undo these knots. And I think it must have taken me a half hour. It must have taken me a half hour to undo these metal wire knots. And I swear I blistered my fingers at a certain point. And I was like, okay, not a great start, but it's fine. Right now I've got all the knots undone. So all that needs to happen is that now the strings are free. The wires are free to lengthen and I move them and they shorten, but they refuse to lengthen. Refu I mean, I'm yanking on the fucking thing and it will not move. And I'm so now it's like two inches off of the plate. You know, that might as well be a flush light fixture, not a chandelier. I'm like, I don't know what to do here. And I called my brother and FaceTimed him and he's like, I can't really tell. Maybe you can bring it over before Thanksgiving. And I was like, no, I wanna get it done now. And I called a coworker and he was like, well, do you see on the bolt, there's that little bronze part? I think you have to undo that. And I was like, Kayla, bless your heart. I have already tried that. And he's like, well, I'm here and I'm on FaceTime. Why don't you try it again? Sure as fucking shit, I do it again while he's on FaceTime and then magically it works because he's watching me. And I'm like, ugh. I swear I tried this before I called you. I'm not a complete, like, dumb blonde. Whatever. So then I undo the bronze piece of the nut and these little balls, these little, like, metal balls, like, s jump out and scatter. And I'm like, ah! Like trying to find them they've like run around my floor and I was like Caleb I guess I don't know where they went and he's like no nah, you probably don't need them I love men because <laughs> if it were me alone I would have like gotten down on my hands and knees and like you know I don't know pawed the ground like a cat or like stuck myself with tape to find these damn teeny tiny things because I thought they were vital and he was like they would probably be fine he was right. It worked just fine without them. Whatever. So then I was like, okay. And I measured the wires perfectly so that they would hang at the right length. And I was like, look at me crushing it. So then I go to um, bring the ceiling up and connect the wires. Okay. Here's where the YouTube videos come into play, right? Out of the ceiling... There's a copper, black, and white. And those should match what you have in your chandelier. My chandelier has copper, clear, and clear. Do I guess? Are either, like, are they, are, are they fine? Am I going to, like, electrocute myself if I do this wrong? Am I going to, like, screw up the wiring in my house? Because, like, maybe that sounds stupid, but my brother put a battery in the wrong way in his car. And it, like, fucked some shit up when we were in high school. I don't remember it exactly, but I'm having, like, PTSD flashbacks from his experience. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And so I, like, Google, like, what do you do with this? And it says, like, you should probably go to Home Depot and get this conduit tester. Cool. If I have to buy a $10 tool, that's totally fine. And so I get there, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, wait, Rachel, you moron. For it to be a conduit tester, you would have, like, the, a conduit tester is only going to check the electricity, right? So the conduit tester is for the ceiling. But the chandelier, which is the problem, isn't attached to anything. So uh, it's not that tool isn't going to help me. So I'm like, <laughs> so I had like a 45 minute conversation with these guys at Home Depot and they were talking about all the different ways that I could like figure out how to do this. And they weren't really sure. And you know, 45 freaking minutes later, I look at them and I'm like, guys, seriously, like what would happen if I guessed? Right? Like, just, what would happen? And they were like, well, you know, the chandelier probably wouldn't turn on. That, that's what we've been talking about for four minutes. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's fine. I, 
Oh my gosh. Overthinking. So then the guys were like, sure, do it that way. And I was like, cool, wish we'd thought of that 45 minutes ago, but fine. And they're like, but if you turn it on, then you need to make sure that you have light bulbs. Did it come with light bulbs? And I said, no. And they're like, let's walk you over to the light bulbs. And we look at the light bulbs and they go, do you know what kind of light bulbs it takes? Gonna be honest with you, I did not know how many different light bulbs in this world there were. There's like regular, there's chandelier size, there's different wattage. I was like, I guys, I don't remember. And they were like, sounds like you're going home and going to look at your chandelier and or the instructions and coming back. And I was like, good call. So that was day one, day one of my chandelier. And I have wires coming out of my ceiling and a chandelier on the floor and no light bulbs. That was a good day one. I was annoyed, but not like frustrated yet. I was just like, oh, okay, you know, what do you do? it's fine. So day two, I go back to Home Depot and I was like, I know what wattage I need. I know what size wood I need, perfect. And I'm standing in front of this wall of light bulbs. Do you know how many kinds of light bulbs there are? There are not only different watt, there's wattage, there's Kelvin, there's Lumen, there's size, like regular and chandelier. And then don't even get me started on colors. There's daylight, bright light, white light, soft light, amber light, and probably 27 others that I don't know about. And I'm standing there like, I don't fucking know. I don't know. And this guy, oh, whatever. So I just grabbed a couple that were the right wattage, which apparently wattage is like old school and it's all about lumens. Whatever. So um, I go back and I take the chandelier and I connect it to the ceiling and I connect copper to copper and then black and white to the two clears and screw in a light bulb, go into my garage, flick the fuse, come back in, turn on the light, it works, huzzah! I am an electrician, look at me. <laughs> and of course I'm a single lady doing this alone. So I have like, like it's on my table. I have stacked boxes and then the chandelier is just like resting on the boxes. Cause I didn't want to like put it up perfectly only to realize that the wires needed to be flipped or something. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I'm taking down the boxes. And as soon as I take down the boxes and I step back, I go, huh? Yeah, I did that measurement completely wrong. The the wires that I told you that I measured perfectly. Of course, I googled how high should your chandelier hang off of your table and it said 32 to 36 inches. You might want it for like an eight foot ceiling and add three inches for every additional foot of ceiling. So I think I had intended to hang them at 36 inches or something. You know what your brilliant friend Rachel did? She measured the wires and made them 36 inches. That means, brilliant Rachel of mine, that it's hanging off of the ceiling from 36 inches. And what you need to do is do the math from ceiling to table and then figure out 36 inches and then that's gonna determine the height from here to the ceiling. I, that was dumb, that was really dumb. But again, not a super big deal, it's gonna be fine. And so I'm like kind of grumbling to myself, but no big deal. And I take down the chandelier and I um, re-measure I do the math from the ceiling to the table and where the chandelier needs to be. And I was like, okay, so then my wires need to be this long and I redo those wires. I'm just pain in the ass, what are you gonna do? But I'm like, I'm almost there. I can see the finish line. Let's just get her done. You know what I mean? And I'm finishing the last wire and tying that knot so that it hangs at the right length. And my hand slips and apparently there is a part of this chandelier that is razor sharp. And I mean, razor sharp. I, it was like I cut myself on a knife in a chef's kitchen. It just went shoo. And I, I, okay. I have a high pain tolerance, but, but I also 
don't have a lot of experience with hospitals. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say is like, I don't, I, I bled. I, I've never ever bled like that before. Like I, it was like a river of blood that was gushing everywhere and I had to hold it and run to the sink and try to bandage myself while I'm turning the bathroom into a murder scene, you know, and I'm trying to get bandages and tighten it. And I had to call a friend of mine and be like, should I be driving myself to the hospital right now? Like I've never cut myself like this before. I don't know if I need stitches. And thank God I know a friend who's a nurse and she like talked me through it and she was just like, you know, t do it as tight as possible, bandage it up, um, and then like go from there. And it did eventually start clotting and I needed, didn't need to go to the hospital. And my sister-in-law laughed at me for even thinking that I needed stitches, but sue me, this is coming from somebody who has never broken a bone and I got stitches once back when I was in first grade. I like, I didn't know. <laughs> And I'm living alone and I'm, I was like at my wits end. So like, call me a pansy if you want to, but I totally panicked and legitimately thought that I might need to like go into urgent care, whatever. So a brilliant human being at this point would like take a deep breath and go, you know what? Day two has been a long day. Maybe we all just take a deep breath and like chill, you know? I think, however, that we have also established in this story that I am not a brilliant human being. If anything, I'm a stubborn son of a bitch, which often works against me as in the case of this story, because instead of just calling it a night and nursing my wounds quite literally and maybe even metaphorically, I decided to, keep, to put the thing up, right? So I'm like, it's right there. We are on the cusp of greatness. So, um... I go back, despite my half working hand, and I fit it to the ceiling and I put the bolts in and knots in and I take down the boxes once again and I stand back and I shit you not, I measured the wires exactly the same way that I did the first time and now they're the right length, but this motherfucker is crooked. Okay, it wasn't that bad, it was like this bad, but like enough that you could tell. And so I grabbed my level and I put my level on top of it and sure as shit, it's angled. And no matter what I did, no matter what I did, it refused to level. It just, it would, uh, and finally I was like, all right, I have reached my end of today. I looked at the chandelier and I said, you are gonna sit there and think about what you've done. And when I physically recover from my wounds, and when I have recovered the emotional patience to deal with you, I will return. But until then, you're going to sit there. And I did for like all week. And I work from home and I just woke up every, like look at that every day. It's in the same room as my quasi office. And I was like, I don't care that you're tilted. I don't care that you are bald and have no crystals on you. I don't care that... All of my coworkers can see you and know the story of how I injured myself like a moron. You are gonna stay there until I have calmed down and I am ready to re-engage in our relationship. <laughs> Whatever. So then, I did, I think it was maybe five days later and now we're getting closer to present time. Um, I was able to take the chandelier down for the third time, for those of you who are keeping track at home, I took it down a third time and redid the wires and found a way to then put it back up and it was level. And all was good in the world for a good 24 hours. <laughs> so then my mom was in town and she came over and she was like, she knew the whole story and she saw the chandelier and it is now at the right height and it is balanced. It's just bald, right? It's, you can see the um, light bulbs, which turn on miracle of miracles, but the crystals need to go on. I'm gonna say the uh, politically incorrect thing. I felt like a child, Chinese child in a sweatshop like, whoever invented this 
has the daintiest fingertips on the planet in the history of the world. Like she and I were like scratching and both of us pricked ourselves and bled once or twice in the ordeal because you have to hang the crystal onto the beads, right? And this is a tiny little thing that'll prick you. And then you have to take the other side of the thing that'll prick you and put it on the hooky thing. And then you have to do that like 57 times for every freaking crystal on this thing. Thank God she was with me and we were able to do it together. And like we stepped back and went, that is a good looking glam bitch ass chandelier. Go us, self high five. And my mom heads home. And I sent a video to my girlfriend. Where I was like, Liam, I need a chandelier. I'm so great and so cute. And uh, celebrated for about 45 seconds. And then I was doing the dishes and I looked up at the chandelier. And then I looked up to the ceiling where the plate connects to the chandelier, connects to the ceiling, right? Because you have a plate and then you have wires and then you have the plate with the um, light bulbs and crystals, right? And so I'm looking at the plate that attaches to the ceiling and there's like a half inch gap, easy, as the thing that's holding it in place is bending because the crystals are heavy and are weighing this thing down. I had, I had to take it down. I thought about leaving it because worst case scenario, it fell, right? But I had wound the wires inside the plate in a way that I think think it would have caught itself and not gone crashing onto my dining room table. But let's be honest, at this point, it's Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So there was at least a 50% chance that the safety measures I'd put in place would not work and it would crash to its death and ruin my dining room table in the process along with shattering itself and the light bulbs. So I took it down and... I'm concerned that in the process of taking it down, the crystals, just so many things have managed to go wrong that these crystals that I have now hung painstakingly on every single hook, I'm worried are like gonna fall off or crack or just because I took it down and laid it softly like a child onto the dining room table. You know, but it seems like no matter what I do, this thing is bent on its own destruction. Um, and I just, I, I kind of, I, my frustration level has reached its peak. <laughs> This is from, you know, the YouTubers. We're like, oh, now we're due. That's when you know what you're doing and don't have the chandelier from hell. <laughs> we're on day four or five, people. And I don't know what to do. I thought every step of the way, it was like ratcheting up in frustration, right? And I was like, metaphor, hmm. Mmm, metaphorically, this is just a really great like lesson from the universe about like endurance and resiliency and determination. And you know, you're learning new things. You don't know how to put up a chandelier and blah, 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 right? So you need to learn to like have patience and just like be determined and resilient and emotionally stable. It's great. And now I'm like, I want to murder everyone. <laughs> I Here's what I don't know. I don't know if I am supposed to learn the lesson from this experience of emotional resilience and you just, you know, taking a step back and then re-engaging when you're ready and taking a step back and re-engaging when you're ready. And that's the emotional resilience journey that we all have to go on in life and is it lame that it's exuding itself in 
the form of a crystal chandelier. Sure is, but that's just life gives you lessons sometimes. And sometimes they're full of lemons as well. Good talk. So is that what I'm supposed to learn? Emotional resilience. And we've just like reached the peak of my ability to breathe through shit. Or am I supposed to learn from this experience when to let go, right? You bought a, a chandelier, it didn't work out. Just like, let it go, man. Just like go with the flow and like, cause is it the most perfect chandelier in the world? No, my coworker Caleb, who I referenced recently, I said, oh, when I put up this chandelier, there's like shadows. Maybe I need new light bulbs. And he was like, no, Rachel, the kind of chandelier that you bought is causing those chandel shadows. I said, Caleb, what do you mean? And he said, well, it's a plate and then you've got these light bulbs. So obviously the light bulbs can't shine through the plate, right? So instead they're causing shadows. And I was like, because the one that was there before the, 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 ba the builder regular one like this, but chandelier style, right? Just has these light bulbs that went up. And while I didn't like the style, the lighting was amazing. And it's in the middle of winter now, right? Like Minnesota winters suck. And it's nice to have a bunch of light. And instead I've got shadows and the chandelier from hell, right? So it's not it's my first time buying a chandelier. I didn't think about the fact that the plate would cause shadows. I didn't know. And so like, maybe I need to learn to let it go and just like pick a different chandelier that maybe will be better. Or like I said before, do I need to learn emotional resilience? And maybe it's a good thing to learn how to hook a heavy chandelier in a safe way from the ceiling, right? Theoretically, this will not be the only home that I own and or that kind of knowledge and skills. I don't know if I would ever use that knowledge or skill before, but like, you know, I don't know what that hand gesture was. To know that you can do it yourself and figure things out yourself and or with the help of others is a valuable skill. I just, I might be at, at the very tail end of my, maybe I just need to give it another couple of days before I totally decide what the moral of the story is. Cause right now the moral of the story is I'm frustrated AF. I had a conversation very similar to this when I was in the middle of uh, a nightmare job girlfriend of mine was like, you got to figure out if the lesson is that you need to learn grit and resilience and stubbornness and see throughness, or if the lesson is to let it go. Had a friend, have a friend who owns a company in Germany. And when the pandemic hit, he almost lost everything multiple times. And he was told by multiple friends and family members, we think you need to learn to let it go. And he's, he genuinely thought about it multiple times and he decided, no, I believe in my company and I believe in what we're doing and I want to stick with it, right? Um, in, in my case, in the nightmare job, I actually was let go in the middle of the pandemic and like, long story short, letting go is the right thing. In his situation, hold, like he came out the other side of that stronger and his company is in a good spot, right? So he learned strength and resilience. I learned to let go. I can't believe I just compared my chandelier situation to my friend's company where he actually employs humans. <laughs> it was not a great analogy. That was very narcissistic of me, but I swear metaphorically it makes sense. I don't, that's the end of my story. That's my, that's my rant for today. Um, and that is my journey in home ownership and the anti-DIY project with a crystal chandelier. That's it. That's all I got. All right. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.